Well, good evening, everybody. I'm David Paul, KHOU 11 Chief Meteorologist here in Houston, Texas. It's Tuesday evening. Here's your Atlantic Tropical Update. Larry, still a hurricane. Invest 91L, still just Invest 91L, although today it did get a little bit, a little bit better organized. We are moving into the time of year. The first couple of weeks of September were statistically we're at the peak of hurricane season, tropical development peaks in the Atlantic Basin on September 11th statistically. That being said, Larry's the only named storm out there and uh, signals continue to be sent across the uh, northern and western hemisphere that things may settle down even as we're heading into what is normally the busiest time of hurricane season. And that may have something to do with where the Madden-Julian oscillations active phase is setting up as we head into this busy statistical uh, busy time of the season. We divide the planet into eight sections. The Madden-Julian oscillation is a global weather pattern. It's a, it's a global wave that when it, the active phase is in our neck of the woods, which is zone eight and one, that's over the Atlantic Basin, when the active phase is here, you know, that's us. And that creates an area where there's lower pressures at the surface. You get a general increase in the amount of lift and that can lead to more storm development and more tropical storm and hurricane development. And the ones that develop can become much more intense. That's when the active phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation is in zone eight and one. So where is it right now? It's here in zone three and it's very weak. The closer you get to the center of this pictograph, the weaker the active phase of the MJO is. Now, what's the forecast? So this is the forecast for the next two weeks, and the MJO is forecast to move into zone four and strengthen all the way out to the edge of the pictograph. So that would be a strong active phase, but the active phase will be over Indonesia and the maritime continent, just the opposite of zone eight and one. So in fact, just the opposite happens. On the other side, away from that active phase, that will put zone eight and one in a sinking phase or a quiet phase. In fact, here's the, another way to look at it. So the active phase of the MJO will be here over Indonesia, the maritime continent. They can expect to see an enhanced general area of lift, lower pressures at the surface, and an increased chance for stronger thunderstorms and, and more storm development here in general. That's where the active phase is, but the quiet phase will be over the Atlantic Basin. And that does have a statistically significant impact on storm development in the Atlantic Basin. So as we look out this evening, we've got Hurricane Larry, Cat 3. And one other thing that's kind of interesting, so Cat 3, uh, Hurricane Larry, if you remember, was forecast to go to Cat 4. That has not happened. Now there's been a little bit of upwelling out here. There may be some cooler water. There's a little bit of dry air around the storm, but it may also have something to do with we're just not in the active phase of the MJO. Quite often that will enhance the intensity of these systems as well. We'll get to Larry in just a moment. Spot in the Gulf of Mexico has gotten a little bit better organized today. I think more importantly, what we're seeing with this latest update is that this is most likely going to go ahead and track to the northeast. And it's got a 40% chance for development here, somewhere in this development region in the northeast Gulf of Mexico over Florida. Or maybe it doesn't develop until it gets out over the uh, open waters of the Atlantic Basin. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if it did develop here. It would be along uh, the Gulf Stream and perhaps moving over the warmer waters of that Gulf Stream, we could see development there. What this will do for the Western Gulf, Houston and Louisiana, New Orleans, is that it should bring in dry air and keep you from having any significant impacts from this system. Again, there it is as it's struggling to develop. Still see most of the convection displaced off to the east. 40% chance it gets its act together in here. So what do the models say? Well, same setup as yesterday. We've got this surface boundary that's pushed. In fact, it's pushed off the coast and into the Gulf uh, along the Texas and Louisiana coast. That's allowed for drier air to build in here. But along that boundary is basically going to be the track of this storm. It will follow along that boundary, moving across Florida, Jacksonville, folks in uh, northern Florida, southern portions of Georgia, the Carolinas, you may see some heavy rain as the moisture from that interacts with that surface boundary, but it really doesn't show any signs of becoming a significant tropical system, a tropical storm or a hurricane, just a more uh, than anything else, a blob of tropical moisture that interacting with the front could cause heavy rain. That's Thursday and we go into Friday and it races off 
into the uh, West Atlantic. And notice that is Larry, who's following now. They'll get caught up in the same trough and be raced off to the north and east. Meanwhile, across the interior southeast U.S., from St. Louis to Atlanta to Houston, that's a dry weather pattern, lower humidity, but it will be hot. You'll make mid to upper 90s underneath that type of a regime. So out over the open Atlantic, we've got Larry. Larry's still a good looking hurricane. In fact, the eye tightened up a little bit late this afternoon. Max wins in Larry at 115, making it a cat three on the Saffir Simpson scale. But the good thing is this is over open water and it is forecast to stay over open water. The wind field in this is still rather large. Hurricane force winds inside the red zone there extend 60 miles out from the center. Uh, tropical storm force winds extending up to 90 miles an hour out from the center. That's up to 60 mile an hour winds and then minimal tropical storm force out from the center 160 miles. So that's from the center 160 miles to the west and at least 160 miles off to the south and east. So it is a very large wind field, which means we will still have impacts a little bit away from the center. However, Bermuda, what I'm talking about is Bermuda. You won't be that bad. It looks like you're going to be on the weak side and far enough away. So maybe tropical storm winds there. The eye tightened up. Remember yesterday we had an eye that had expanded to about 65 miles in diameter. Today it has shrunk to 30 miles in diameter. It looks like it may have gone through some sort of eye wall replacement cycle. That being said, pressures have risen a little bit. We're at 965 millibars and winds have decreased a little bit today. We're down to 115 mile an hour winds yesterday at this time still at 120. It remains to be seen if it's able to strengthen much more. It looks like it's going to hold its intensity as it heads to the north and west. In fact, Hurricane Center now has this dropping to a cat two as it misses the island of Bermuda. That's that little speck right there. But the waves will be significant close to the center. Wave heights out here 35 to 40 feet. Wave heights along the coast of the Carolinas, the Virginias, the Jersey Shore. You're getting into this little turquoise area. You could see uh, waves on the coast six to eight feet, maybe a 10 foot swell in some spots here. Beach erosion, but that's the worst of it. You won't feel any other significant impacts from Hurricane Larry. The storm weakens to Cat 2, misses Bermuda, but you're still under tropical storm watches in Bermuda as it may be close enough to bring you some tropical storm force gusts and then it races on off to the north and east and weakens. But this track is, is interesting. Quite often you'll see them head more to the east, not so much to the north. Take a look at the spaghetti plots. This is interesting. It takes it up all the way uh, on a track in between Greenland and Iceland. There's Reykjavik. So they may have quite uh, a, a, a blow up here across uh, Iceland as the storm, the remnants of it, race to the northeast. And at that time, it will be moving very quickly, 35 to 40 miles an hour. They could have 60, 70 mile an hour winds across Iceland because of the remnants of that storm. What's picking it up and moving it? It's this trough digging in at the upper levels. This is the flow up at 34,000 feet. This is Friday. There's Cat 2 Larry getting caught up in that flow, racing up past uh, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland. And then there, there's the track heading up past between Greenland and Iceland. That's going to be a very windy uh, early part of next week for those folks. So as we look at the big picture, the GFS and the Euro, there goes Larry. And then after that, things really settle down. No significant signs of any new tropical development across the Atlantic Basin. That being said, I do see the Euro is trying to pick them on maybe forming a little low pressure area just off the west coast of Africa. This is going into the 12th, so five days out from today. What there is of that moves north and does not become a significant player in the tropical Atlantic Basin. That's September the 15th. Just nothing stands out. So this may end up being the, uh, the impact of that MJO the, with the positive lifting phase being on the other side of the globe and the negative, the sinking phase, the dry phase, setting up shop over the Atlantic Basin. It could be that it shuts down development, new development, even though we are moving through statistically what is the busiest time, normally the busiest time of the Atlantic hurricane season. I'd love your questions and comments. Leave them to me in the comments section down there. Hit me up on social media. We'll be back tomorrow with another update.